So today is the day I have an RX 580 8GB card. This is the cheapest one on Amazon right now that I could find at least. It was the cheapest as of purchasing. And I'll link it down below in case you want to check out the uh, current pricing of this card. But I want to disassemble this thing. I've actually already run it through uh, Heaven Benchmark just to see what the cooling looks like on this card. And uh, yeah, it was actually adequate for what the card is. I'm interested to see how well this thing is constructed. It actually feels more solid than I thought it would. Uh, but let's get into this card and see just a, you know, how well is the cooler contact on the die itself? Does it cool the memory chips? Is it cooling the power delivery? All those things I'm curious about with this roughly $100 RX 580 that's brand new. Kind of, and we'll talk about that as we go. So the interesting thing about this backplate is it is connected only through the card itself. Like uh, none of these back screws actually release the back plate of the card. So that's actually gonna be the last thing that comes off. But it looks like we just have these six screws to get rid of the actual cooler off of the GPU itself. So let's go ahead and get that started. And by the way, I know that iFixit is really good, but this toolkit, much cheaper. I'll probably link that down below as well uh, in case you need an electronics toolkit uh, for this type of procedure, though I grabbed the wrong bit. But as you can see, it does have tons of different bits with this toolkit. It's probably not quite as good, high quality as iFixit, but it's good enough. In case we have tension screws there, it has little springs on it which is interesting, usually you just see that with the screws around the actual die of the GPU. You don't normally see those everywhere on the GPU, so that's an interesting little detail. Looks like we have a warranty void sticker. Do not remove. We're gonna remove it. See, the downside of them using such low quality stickers is that you can save the sticker and potentially just, you know, put it back on. Okay, so it looks like all the screws are identical there. Let's rotate this around. Oop, there we go. Release this pretty easily. Let's go ahead and see if I can Cooler. As well as the die itself. Not sure if you'll be able to see this, but there is absolutely no writing on the die itself, no engraving or anything like that. So from a quick Google search, that's actually normal from what I can tell. AMD doesn't seem to actually put the writing on the die itself like Nvidia does. So uh, there doesn't seem to be anything overly nefarious going on there. Let's talk a little bit about the cooling and what we're seeing here uh, with this particular card. First off, it's pretty much good news all the way around. Uh, the thermal paste had good spread on the die itself no major issues there whatsoever. We do have two copper heat pipes here that are connected to the cooler. Um, the cooler itself is nothing special to write home about. It's a very basic GPU cooler, as you saw in the uh, B-roll at the start where I'm running the benchmark, and that was all before I tore the card down. Uh, it keeps the card cool enough, though you also, if you were keen, may have noticed that the clock speed on this card is a little bit lower than a stock RX 588 gigabyte card. Now, I have played a little bit with overclocking, so you can actually overclock this card. That's not like locked in any way. Uh, you can go into the AMD Radeon software, the Adrenaline software, and overclock this card to your heart's content. You may have better or worse luck depending on the luck of the silicon lottery, but you can actually overclock the card to get it back up to sort of what you would expect an RX 588 gig card to be. Cooler, really nothing special at all. Uh, but the good news here, it is adequate and the memory chips are also touched with the 
uh, thermal pads here as well. So you don't have to worry about your memory chips being not cooled directly. They are in fact in contact. All of the memory chips, uh, the six are covered by these two pads and then these other standalone chips have their own little pads on them. So good job there. And our power delivery is also covered with a, uh, a pad here as well. So everything that needs to be touching the cooler with some sort of thermal solution, the GPU, the memory chips, as well as the power delivery, that's all covered by this cooler, however basic it is and however loud it is because it isn't the quietest cooler out there it is adequate, so you're not getting ripped off by the cooler. The only other thing to check with this teardown really is to take this back plate off to see if there's any kind of pads on the back here to see if it's actually directly contacting uh, this. It, it's a metal back plate, like it's not even a plastic back plate, it's an actual, it's a metal back plate. So uh, if they had some sort of thermal solution touching the back plate, you could even get some extra cooling on the back side of the car, though I suspect we're not gonna find any. And like I suspected, there's no extra cooling that's taking anything from the GPU and dumping it onto the back plate itself for extra cooling. So that's not gonna be in the picture whatsoever. However, all things considered, this card is perfectly adequately cooled. Um, like I said, everything that is needing to be cooled is being actively cooled by this particular thermal solution. So I have no issues with it. Um, I also mentioned out of the box, this will not perform quite as well as a stock RX 580, eight gigabyte card, whether you're talking about the reference models from AMD or the other third party cards that actually were launched back when this card was still in production. Now the GPU, here's what I suspect is happening. The GPU is likely not brand new because they're not being made any more as far as I'm aware. RX 580s are not currently in production. So I expect what's happening, all these cheap mining cards that are hitting the market are being harvested by third party board makers in uh, primarily seems like these are coming out of China, which is no surprise at all there. And in fact, I actually really love this because what they're doing is they're taking GPUs that are likely perfectly good and they're strapping on new PCBs to these cards and then selling them for a very cost friendly uh, price to the consumer. And frankly, right now, as far as new cards go, we're kind of starved on the lower side of the GPU market. So I actually love this as a possible solution. Now, I did see a OzTalks hardware uh, video about a similar card uh, in the very similar price range as this one. And he gave a good piece of advice that I wanna pass along to you as well. If you do purchase one of these cards through Amazon, you have fantastic buyer protection from Amazon. So what you're gonna to want to do is put this card through a stress test, like an extended stress test. Run heaven benchmark overnight with these cards and make sure there's no artifacting, there's nothing weird going on with the GPU itself. Make sure it's gonna be perfectly functional because what you wanna do is figure out if it's defective, if you figure it out in a short span of time, you can just send it back, get your money back or get a replacement card because it is very possible that these cards will have a higher failure rate because they're not using 100% brand new components. I also expect the quality control on these cards is not as good as it would have been back when AMD was still manufacturing the RX 580. But as far as a budget solution goes, this is as good as it gets because it's a new-ish card, you could call it, even call it like a refurbished new card. You get great buyer protection from Amazon and you can get yourself a gaming PC up and running without spending an arm and a leg for a current generation GPU. So all told, I'm actually quite happy with this GPU. Again, I'll link some of these cheaper RX 580s in the description down below. I will be doing a performance review of this card as well as trying to overclock it a little bit. So if you want to see that video, subscribe down below. Otherwise, I'm out of here. Have a fantastic day. And um, I never know how quite to end these videos. Bye.